Hey everyone, hope you're all having an awesome day wherever you are. Today I'm gonna to be sharing just everything on my Pinterest board, my whole list of things that I'd like to buy, spanning across beauty, fashion, fragrance, a few other things. I'm really trying to change my spending habits right now because we're trying to buy a house and the economy and the WJ strike are really affecting my job. So I'm excited to just go to my little happy place right now and uh, talk about all the things I'd love to buy. I have my computer pulled up and I'm gonna start with fragrance. So the perfume that I've had my eye on for a couple weeks now is the Ceremonia Perfume de la Tierra. And let me tell you, this marketing campaign, mm, God, a good marketing campaign just really gets under my skin. The marketing for this was so effective that me and like everyone I know in the beauty space wanted to buy this perfume without even knowing the notes. They dropped all of these beautiful images and videos of like waterfalls and flowers blooming and like dirt and grass and plants and humans and skin. And it was just like the sexiest, earthiest thing ever. Ever. I think everyone was just like, whatever it is, I'm getting it. And luckily I've heard that the scent is actually incredible. And I think that it translates to perfume of the earth. So Ceremonia says, Perfume de la Tierra provokes the duality between nostalgia and modernity, featuring a scent that blooms of soft woody notes and a delicate hint of bergamot. The fragrance also contains the South African tonka bean, which offers a nostalgic sense of familiarity alongside subtle whispers of pink pepper, violet, vetiver, and driftwood. The layered scent opens up and blossoms in its entirety, offering the woodiness of a vibrant, humid rainforest. Oh! Come on, you have no idea how much control I'm having to exercise to not fucking buy this thing. Like all I want is this goddamn perfume. And the bottle, it looks so beautiful. It looks like nice and gender neutral and it is supposed to be gender neutral, which I really, you know, I really like. And here are the notes in its entirety. Top notes of bergamot, pink pepper, and basil. Heart notes of jasmine petals, peach and ginger. Base notes of vetiver, tonka bean, and driftwood. My friend Sierra Taylor, who's a content creator here, she She's incredible. She said that she loved it. She didn't feel like the pink pepper was too sharp. I asked her because sometimes pink pepper and perfumes just can be like really astringent and sharp on my nose. She said it didn't have that. She also said the jasmine isn't too overpowering because I don't love jasmine. She said it was perfectly balanced and grounded. My other friend on Instagram, Emily of Glitter Goblin, she said something very similar. She said it's basically like the perfect combination of something, a perfume that's really fresh, aquatic and woody, and also something super fruity like DS and Durga Debaser, and Debaser is one of my signature scents in the warmer months. So I have just been stalking the internet trying to see if any of my favorite fragrance sample companies have come out with a sample of this, and unfortunately they haven't. But right now it's May 18th, and I'm gonna be going to New York the first week of July, and Sierra's gonna be there. So I might actually ask her to bring her perfume to dinner, and then I can spray it and see if I like it. And that way I'll know if it is worth the cost, because, you know, it's a full-size perfume, they don't have samples, it's $65 and I don't want to be spending $65 if I don't absolutely have to. So please, if you've tried Ceremonia Perfume de la Tierra, let us know how it smells. I really want to live vicariously through you. Okay, the next item is a skincare item and it's from this brand called Slurp. My friend Vanessa of Goals to Get Glowing on Instagram raves about this and she says that it just destroys blackheads. And what it is, is an acidic decongestant focused on treating chronic congestion like blackheads, whiteheads, acne, milia, papules, etc., decreasing pore diameter. They have really awesome pictures here and information about the ingredients. But, you know, one of the things that is just so important for me is hearing real results from real people. And my friend Vanessa showed her results on Instagram and absolutely raves about it. You know what? If, if I can find her post, I'll actually leave it linked on the screen above or in the description box so you can check it out. She said that Slurp is the most unique formula she's tried for this kind of a format. When you shake it, it's oil soluble because of the inclusion of oils and fatty acids. It has antioxidants. It has hydrating and soothing ingredients. It has antibacterial and sebum regulating ingredients. And it has two exfoliants. You have 5% PHA, 0.5% BHA. Honestly, I really wanted to buy it, but it's been sold out ever since she posted about it. So I probably would only purchase it when I run out of one of my current skincare products that is a chemical exfoliator. Although if we're going to kind of anti-haul this as well, do I really need this product? And I think the answer is 
those know because I've been using tretinoin or alternating with my Epiduo Forte retinoid every single night except for once a week. And so frankly, that just kind of already gives me the exfoliation that I need, although it is a different process. So maybe I don't even need it, but hearing how much it changed your skin, I, I do want it. Next, um, the Diptyque Candle in Ombre. So it's basically like a super woody kind of spicy candle. It has woods, vetiver, patchouli, aniseed, spices, mysterious incense, cistus, and tonka bean. And I remember when I was at my friend Rachel's house for Thanksgiving, she's also a content, you know what? I'll just leave everybody in the description box below. You can check them out. Rachel is the skincare standard on Instagram. I was at her house for Thanksgiving in San Francisco and she had this candle burning alongside a bunch of others. And what she did is she put one candle with a different scent in every single room. So every room had a different scent and I thought it was so great. Even though it was an open apartment, none of the scents clashed, nothing was too overpowering. She just really knew how to give you an experience involving fragrance and that was one of the candles I really liked. However, Diptyque is $74 and the candles are tiny. So, you know, not wanting to buy that right now. And also it's almost summertime. I don't really need to be buying a really woody, more, you know, fall, winter appropriate candle. So this is gonna stay on the wish list. Next, we have the FutureWise Slug Cream Barrier Repair Moisturizer. Okay, another product a friend has influenced me to buy. <laughs> this one, Devin Jesmer, who is one of my closest friends, she loves this product and it's their Barrier Repair Moisturizer Cream. Oh wait, is that the wrong thing? I thought I was looking at the slugging product. Hold on. Okay, wrong one. I'm looking at the FutureWise Slug Balm Moisture Locking Occlusive. So this is a slugging product and if you don't know what slugging is, basically you take a petrolatum based product or just like Vaseline and you use it as the last step of your skincare routine, a very, 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 very thin layer. And if you apply it on your skin, it locks in all the skincare you have underneath. And then in the morning you wake up and your skin still feels like it kind of has freshly applied skincare. It's still soft and bouncy rather than being like crusty and having lots of dehydrated lines. But a lot of people like me really don't like the feeling and the greasiness and the slipperiness of Vaseline products. So a lot of people have just been head over heels for future wise and this slugging system that they have. This product is only $24 and you can get it at Target, which is great. But Dev since told me that she actually prefers the Experiment Buffer Jelly and I bought it because of her and I have it right here and I love it. It is a combination of an oil jelly hybrid and you just shake like two drops, one or two drops into your, your palm and then massage it into your hands and apply it all over your face and neck after you're done with your skincare at night. And it just seals everything in with an occlusive layer that feels, you know, lightweight and beautiful. And she said she preferred this one. So I'm gonna hold off on the future wise for now. Okay, a significantly bougier and pricier item that I have been eyeing for months and months and months now are the Prada Brushed Leather Monolith Loafers. They're so cool. I tried them on at the Prada store when I was there in Miami and they are surprisingly lightweight. That chunky part of the loafer looks like it would be super heavy. And I don't like heavy shoes because I have back problems and chronic illness, but these were actually light as air when I tried them on. And I think they're so cool. They totally match my style, you know, because they're a leather loafer, they're kind of preppy, but then because they have that chunky sole, they're a little bit more punky. I just think that they're so cool. I would wear these forever. I, I just, I absolutely love them. But obviously, I mean, they're Prada. They're over $1,200. That's a pretty penny. And I certainly don't need to be spending that kind of money right now. So I will not be buying them right now, but they will be holding strong on my wish list. That is for sure. And then I was also deciding between the Prada chocolate brushed leather loafers. These are a more classic style, a little bit more androgynous, I think too. And I really like that. I think these are probably more timeless, but I like the others more. Instagram ads got me again. Instagram is honestly where I get like a lot of my clothing these days because Instagram knows what I'm looking for. And so they just serve me exactly what I want. Before Coachella, it was serving me all these like awesome flowy matching sets. And this is when it popped up on my list. It's this company called Lala, I guess. I thought it was LA something, but I guess it's Lala. And this is the Lala original Lex rib checkerboard play suit in black and mocha. Oh my God, she's wearing it with the Prada. <gasps> She's wearing it with the Prada loafers. I feel like it's a sign. I feel like it's a sign that I have to buy this outfit. It's so sick. It, it's like black and maroon, like checkered matching, like oversized pants and shirt. This is so me. I would style it exactly like that too. And she's wearing exactly the Prada loafers I wanted. Well, I may not be buying those Prada loafers, but I might be buying this play suit because I think it looks really, really cool. I'm so into this. Definitely gonna check out the rest of their stuff. Moving on to Sephora. I saw that Armani is launching a new shade, at least 
on Sephora of the Lip Power Satin Lipstick. It's the shade 107 Central, which they say is a soft beige. So I pretty much just put it on my wish list just because I want to see what the color looks like in person. If something's on my wish list the next time I'm able to go to a Sephora, then I can swatch it and see if it works for me. Definitely wouldn't just blind buy it though, because while I love the Armani Lip Power formula, it's so creamy and pigmented and beautiful and comfortable. The digital swatches are nothing like the shades in person. Like they are the total opposite of what the actual colors are. So the color right now on the lips on the models looks like kind of an orangey brown. Definitely doesn't look like a soft beige, but honestly, Armani is just so bad when it comes to the artificial swatches. I'm not going to trust that. I'm just going to keep it in my wish list. Then I also have the NARS Afterglow Liquid Blush in the shade Behave in my cart. When I first saw the initial digital swatches on Trend Mood, Behave looked like it was a lot, a lot more of like a soft, muted, mauve shade. And I thought that would be nice because I don't have anything like that in a liquid form. And then I remembered, yes, I do. I have the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wand in Pillow Talk, which seems to be a super similar shade. And I wouldn't really want any of the other shades here. So I'm going to keep this in my wish list, and I'm going to be in Miami next week. And hopefully Sephora has it and I can see if it's something that would really be suited for me. Otherwise, I will delete it from my list. But I definitely don't need it now. One that I really, really would love to get is the Shark Beauty Shark Flex Style Hair Blow Dryer Multi-Styler for straight and wavy hair. So this is basically supposed to be like the Dyson Air Wrap, but a less expensive version. And some people have said that they actually even prefer this more. I'm pretty sure Abby Young said that in a video. My friend Sierra, again, she loves this. She has kind of shoulder length hair. She used it and it looks like she got a perfect fresh blowout. I have always been looking for a way to get that kind of just got out of the salon blowout hair. Although I've never really had that look at a salon. They always just like curl my hair. But anyways, I want that beautiful bouncy look. And you know, $300 is still pretty expensive, but compared to the Dyson, in, which I think is like five or six hundred dollars. This is half the cost, but do I need it right now? Absolutely not. So it's gonna stay on my wish list. Next up, I have the Benefit Cosmetics Fluff Up Brow Flexible Brow Texturizing Wax. That's a weird name. Fluff Up Brow Flexible Brow Texturizing Wax. All right, whatever. This has ugly packaging. Like it is ugly as hell. I just, I hate the way that <laughs> Benefit designs their products, but I got a little sample of the brow wax and it's incredible. I'm wearing it today. It makes my brow like it, it lifts them and it gives them that brushed up fluffy natural look without being heavy, crunchy, flaky. It feels still flexible somehow, even though it has quite a strong hold. I love it. It is probably going to knock off the Live Tinted Hue Brow as my favorite brow gel. So when I run out of that sample, I will be buying this. Um, it's just, it's that good. Then I saw that Necessaire launched a body retinol repair serum with 0.1% retinol and 10% AHA and five peptides. So at first I was like, yes, I absolutely want to get this. I ran out of my Replenix retinol body lotion and I wanted to repurchase it, but it was $100 for a body lotion. So this is $55, which is half the price of that. And I thought, okay, well, that would be good. But at the same time, I think Notorium has a body retinol, right? Let me look. Yeah, Notorium has a retinol body lotion for $25. And sure, would it be nice to have the peptides and the AHA? Like that would be nice, but this is a serum. And I just never reached for the necessary body serum when I had it because it just added another step that I had to do in my skincare routine. Like it's hard enough to get me to do body lotion after I shower, but then to have to do a serum and a lotion, mm -mm, not happening. So definitely not going to buy this. I'm going to remove this from my wish list, And instead, when I run out of my current body lotion, I'm going to get the Naturium. By the way, they do say though, if you have tattoos, don't put any chemical exfoliants or retinols there because it'll break down your tattoo faster. So I just kind of like leave that area out. I have the Hourglass Mini Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade mood exposure, which is a soft plum blush fused with mood light. It just says with mood light to brighten the complexion. Mood exposure just looks like that perfect soft kind of cool toned mauve beige that I think would look good just on an everyday basis. My current kind of like my skin but better blushes are the Jones Road blush in the shade Sandy, which is a little bit more of like a pinky my skin but better blush. Then there's Laura Mercier Fresco, which is a little bit more of 
like a tan peachy My Skin But Better blush and I'm wearing that. Actually, I'm wearing both of those blushes right now, but I'm still looking for that perfect My Skin But Better blush and I just feel like this color is it. Something that looks like I'm almost not wearing blush, but just like a little bit amped up. So I'm really interested in this. People love this formula. And then I also really wanted the shade, where is it? Um, Euphoric Fusion, but they only have a full size of that, which is $45, whereas they have a mini of Mood Exposure for around $25. And Euphoric Fusion is a soft lilac blush blended with Euphoric Strobe Light for a resplendent glow. I was watching an amazing video from Nikki LaRose where she purchased every single blush at Sephora and applied them all on one cheek in the same sitting. It was amazing. It was so much fun to watch. And she said that I think that Euphoric Fusion was her favorite blush out of everything. She just said it applied like a dream. It was the perfect color. It made her cheeks look absolutely beautiful. But I own so many blushes. This is a shimmer finish, it says, and I feel like I have too many shimmery blushes. I'm looking for more kind of powder matte finishes. So I just don't think that this is the right time for me to buy this right now. I need to, I need to use up some blushes in my collection. We also have the Givenchy Prism Libre Skin. Wait, how do you say it? Is it Prism Libre? Prism Libre? But then how do you say it if you're not trying to speak French? Prism Libre? Prism Libre? Libre? Like, how do you? I never know what to say if something's French. Like, are you supposed to try to say it in the French accent? Or are you supposed to just say it like an American? Like the dumbass American that I am. Anyways, it's the Givenchy Concealer and I really love it. I have it in the shade C240. It's so beautiful. It's like blurring, super spreadable and thin. Sets down to a gorgeous satin natural finish. Has solid medium cover. Coverage, doesn't emphasize texture or anything like that. But C240 is just a little bit too light for me. Unfortunately, this seems to skew very, very light. Because I have the shade C240 and C240 is like way lighter than this. And it's described as light to medium with cool rosy undertones. So I think I might try N250, which is light to medium with neutral undertones. But I think that's still going to be too light for me. So I might actually have to go all the way to C305, which is medium with rosy cool undertones. But again, when it comes to shade matching, I'm just going to wait until I can be in Sephora, even though I don't have a Sephora within a few hours near me. I think the nearest Sephora, yeah, the nearest Sephora to me is three and a half hours away. So I'm going to wait until I'm in Miami and I'll see if there's a shade match. Next, I have the Charlotte Tilbury Hyaluronic Happy Kiss Lipstick Balm in the shade Happy Berry in my cart. I think it was one of the contestants on Love Island USA said that this was her go-to product. And this is like one of my all-time favorite lip formulas. It's just that the shade Happy Berry looked really, really dark. And I know that this formula is so pigmented, so I've held off on it. But honestly, hearing that it was her favorite lipstick, I'm kind of itching for it. It does look very dark in the swatches online, but I kind of wonder if there's a way to just like dab it on and sheer it out. At the same time, it's spring and summer now. I'm not going to be reaching for my berries. I'm just going to be reaching for like my sheer glossy lips, my nudes, my pinks, the, my peaches, the corals, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to... Uh, uh, keep that on my wish list. Next, I have the Hourglass Phantom Volumizing Glossy Balm in the shade Mist in my cart. It's described as a pale pink, and this is the mental game that's going on here that I know a lot of us kind of have to deal with. I tried this product. I loved it. The shade Slip is perfect. It's a beautiful rose shade. It's brightening. It's glossy. It, it's just great with my complexion and my undertones. And then once I find a product in a shade that's perfect, my brain starts wanting the other shades. And it's like, well, if this shade is so good, then maybe that shade is going to be even better. And it never is. It's always the one where you're like, that's it. That's the one. That is the one. And you should just stick with that one. So I have this in my cart so that next time I go to Sephora, I can try it on. But I remembered when I went to Sephora and I swatched it one time and that was the one that sold me on slip. The shade Mist actually wasn't a pale pink. It was like very, very peach. And I don't really like peaches on me or anything kind of too orangey. So that's going to stay in my wish list, and I'll try to swatch it the next time I'm in Sephora. And then lastly, I have the AF94 Give Em Lip High Shine Lip Gloss. That's what I'm wearing on my lips today by itself. This is in the shade Do You See It, which is just clear. I love this gloss formula so much. It's like a cross between a gloss and a liquid lip balm. Totally fragrance-free. It's so comfortable. It's shiny. It just fills in the lip lines and looks so smoothing and beautiful. It's $7.98 at Walmart. I might be interested in some of the other shades. Honey, I'm Home looks like a really nice kind of beigey brown with a hint of pink in there. There's like a very light creamy pink. There's a really, really, really light peachy pinky beige kind of shade. So because they're only $7.98, I might actually pick one up, but 
But if I think about it, let's think really critically here. If these colors on the website for AF94, the colors don't look great. There is a kind of like lighter nude one, but would I reach for the lighter nude of this versus Ami Cole Bliss? No, because this is a perfect formula and a perfect color. So I don't need another shade that looks like this because I already have this. And then the other shades they have there, they have like a dark red, which I definitely wouldn't wear. They have a bright pink that's a little cool tone. They have a really light cool toned pink that's kind of Nars Turkish Delight. That looks like it would be a little too light, a little bit too, you know, too much white pigment for me. And then the other shades are either the one that looks like Bliss from Ami Cole or another one that looks too light. So taking my critical thinking hat off, I think that was the the sign that I'm good with just this one for now. That's it. I hope you liked this little wish list video. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Let us all know what's on your wish list or anything that you've been loving lately. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe while you're here. It really helps to grow my channel and wherever you are, I hope you're having an awesome day. Sending you lots of love and I'll see you in the next one.